I thought I would just, you know, do the video here. And so what I did, I'm using this, uh, one of my favorite sketchbooks here. It's made by Canson and it's uh, Aquarelle. I'll just open the cover here so you can kind of see what it is. I like it because it's big. I like it because it has a spiral binding. And I also like that it has this watercolor paper. It says Aquarelle, watercolor Aquarelle, and it's made by Canson. And it's 140 pound weight, which is a very good weight for watercolor paper. It's not wimpy. And it's 14 by 11 inches or 35.5 by 27.9 centimeters. Now I'm devoting this book to the exploration of color palettes or color for the most part. I mean, that's where I'm starting. Anyways, it's a brand new sketchbook. And so what I did, and you don't have to do this, but I, I guess maybe part of what I like is that if I'm going to do a series of work trying to exemplify a color palette, like I'm going to start out with the tonalist palette. So what I did, and you can do this or not, just, just don't do it if it doesn't appeal to you. But for me, uh, you know how he said have the same composition but change the colors. Well, I'm not going to have the exact same composition. And so just keep in mind that just like I'm not going to do the exact same composition, you don't either. <laughs> just do what you want, basically. Sure, he's suggesting that, but that doesn't mean, you know, you have to do that. So that's one way that I'm differing from what Toph suggested. I did write tonalist here, and on the sides here I wrote tones, shades, grays, black. Just as like jog my memory. Um, if I'm doing a tonalist palette, I'm sticking to a tone, which is uh, colors, and these are my, my colors. I'm keeping things really simple. I'm just sticking here with uh, the primary, so I chose Cad Red Light Cerulean Blue, because I normally use Ultramarine Blue, I thought, well, I'll change it, and then Yellow Light, Cad Yellow Light. The secondary colors are Permanent Green Light, is what I chose orange and violet but you know i'm you can choose what you want i'm just saying that i'm keeping it simple i'm only going to have six colors for all the palettes that i do with tove's colors because this is meant to be a guideline and i could put 20 more colors out here that are high intensity but this is just a study and then i've got my gray my white and my black and those either will or will not be used depending on which palette I'm looking at. Those are my colors. So I'm working in acrylic because acrylic is fast. You can, you know, uh, paint over it, dry it, paint over it, dry it. I've got some, you know, I've, just for fun, you know, you can do some mark making if that, if that's what you want. Uh, it doesn't matter if those colors match the palette because they're extra, but I just thought, well, it'd be kind of fun. I've got two wet palettes prepared here just because I want one to have my, 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 my pure color on, my black, white, and gray, and I'll use my other one for mixing. So I've got two wet palettes set up. Now getting back to the template, you don't have to do this, but I just thought I'd do it. And what I did was I, I wanted to have four of each palette. So this is a toneless palette. I want four examples. I want them to be all the same size, all the same shape. You don't have to do that. I made this template based on this size of watercolor paper. If I had a tiny sketchbook, you, you just, you don't, you make your own template. So I'm really into making my own stencils and templates in case you haven't guessed. And I kept this one really simple. I basically said to myself that I, I don't want the these examples to hit the spiral binding. So I gave myself plenty of space and I just, when I lay this over the top, what you can see is that I've got an inch, an inch, an inch, an inch, and this is a half inch up here. And this whole border here is a half inch and down here is a half inch. So that was easy. And now I know that each of my windows, I think it's like five, I think it's five wide. Yeah, and four and a half tall. So it's almost a square, which, you know, I love the square. Anyway, so then I traced them on here, and that way when I do each of my uh, examples, you know, I can throw this on there and trace the little squares, and, and I'm ready to go. For my composition, like I said, I'm not going to keep all the identical compositions, but in my mind, I'm thinking something very simple. I love geometry. I love geometric shapes. So I want to then use what I learned from this study, these many studies, and then work on some larger paintings. That's what you all want to do. So 
whatever it takes. I, acrylic, even if you don't work in acrylic, again, you don't need that many colors. I've got six over here and these three guys. And you can buy any beginner acrylic set for like probably under $20. They don't have to be professional grade or anything. Okay, so again, I've used a template. You can use a template, you don't have to, but if you're doing an exercise like this, this automatically creates a series, right? I automatically will have four. And if I love this palette, I might do 10 pages of this palette, right? That's something that you can, I'm just going one page at a time. Also for mark making, you know, if, if you wanna throw something in there that has nothing to do with color, go for it. You can put marks in here and that's why I brought these guys out and I, I have the dry pencils and all that kind of stuff. When you work on something this tiny, you know, the brushes obviously are going to match what I'm working on here. So I just have small brushes. This is actually feeling pretty big compared to this format. These are smaller. Uh, these are my flats. Notice how they have that cut off edge on a, like a flat haircut. And, uh, you know, these guys are, they're called filberts, but, you know, they just have a rounded top. And then this would be my one round. Um, hoping that they've been cleaned out well, <laughs> but it's a fine round. And then I've got my, I've got a, a cloth underneath here is what I use for when I work with acrylic. But then I put paper towel over it several layers so that uh, I, the, the paint goes into the paper towel, which captures most of the pigment. And then, you know, this actually has color in it, but I can use this a whole lot longer as long as I put paper towel on top, which captures the paint the pigment particles and then the water goes into here but it doesn't get as pigmented. I hope that makes sense. I've got three containers of water as I've talked about before. I just hold up two so you can see but these are just yogurt containers and my system for keeping my brushes and my colors clean is that I first of all grab like a paper towel to grab the bulk of paint out of the the brush and then I'll go into the first container of water, swish it around, swish it around, put it back in the paper towel and then move into the second container and, and by that time there's really hardly any color coming out and then that third container is, is like if you really, really need a clean brush. So right now these are all tones of red and uh, other decisions you might make as you're painting is you, know, you might say, well, I want this one to be predominantly warm or not. I mean, whatever. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff, but these are the things you might be thinking about. And it's all about tone and shades. It's not about pure color. So I don't want to put pure color on my tonal palette. I could put it here and a little bit of, uh, it's kind of watered down, I think, but a little bit of, uh, I could take a little bit of the red. I can take a little bit of the gray. Now it's definitely a tone. Play around with shape and edge. I love the rough edge. I like the smooth edge, but I like to vary it. Right now I'm just thinking about large areas of color. Don't want them to be all alike. I want some to be bigger than others. I want, you know, again, each layer can be sort of you test out the things you love and I love these, you know, crazy shapes and things like that. So, and I'm just going to keep it simple. Again, you don't have, just because you squirted colors out doesn't mean you have to use them all. Use, you know, you, you might say this one's going to be predominantly cool. This one's going to be predominantly warm. And by doing that, you just simplify things. You make these limitations at the start because it simplifies the process. Value by itself, value lights and darks are really going to draw the eye. I don't want the white of the paper to show because white's not part of the tonalist palette. And again, not a rule, just an observation. Even though this is just a small study, it's a small exercise, it's not, you know, not going to be a masterpiece of any kind. I'm still listening to what this thing is telling me. There's never a shortage of conversation. So here's how it looks right now, and then I will take close-ups, and um, yeah, it's just really fun to explore these different palettes. Thanks, everyone.